So guys, there has been quite a bit of controversy regarding ticket sales for the 2023 British Grand Prix at Silverstone. And yeah, that is what we're going to get into in this video and get into the absolute ripping off of diehard loyal F1 fans and British F1 fans that has gone on here. Now, quickly, I'll uh, play this clip on screen. This is a guy, I think his channel is Mike Edwards. I'm just going to show this as a um, a filler, basically, so you guys can look at the Silverstone track. So, the 2023 F1 calendar has not been officially confirmed yet, but we do know that the British Grand Prix is going to be on the calendar um, in 2023. So, the ticket sales are already taking place. And Silverstone have absolutely, um, they've handled it in such an absolutely horrible way. Not just in terms of um, the website, you know, crashing, but also the actual ticket prices and the whole system really has been handled just so, so horribly. So let's get into how this situation all played out. And we'll start. With this tweet from David Croft, obviously the uh, main Sky Sports F1 commentator. This was his tweet on September 15th, which was a Thursday. I think Thursday, September the 15th, this was. And he tweeted, after receiving a few tweets about your struggles to buy tickets for the 2023 British Grand Prix, he said, because obviously the September the 15th is when I think the tickets went on sale and there were people queuing uh, virtually to get those tickets. Uh, he said he spoke to Silverstone uh, at Silverstone UK and uh, they told him 210,000 people registered to be able to buy tickets. And currently, obviously he means at the time, there are 25,000 in the queue. Hence the delays, the payment issue has been fixed. But then about an hour, maybe an hour and a half later, Silverstone published this statement. They um and this um issue, by the way, in terms of being able to continue uh on the website selling tickets, I don't think was resolved until the day after, or maybe the day after that on the Saturday. Can't remember exactly. Uh, but they said we've decided to suspend the 2023 Formula One British Grand Prix ticket sale, as we're acutely aware a lot of fans have experienced intermittent issues in securing their tickets due to ongoing issues with the ticketing or our ticketing provider there obviously ticketing provider circuitix circuitix something like that um we feel the fairest thing for us to do is to temporarily pause sales and freeze all ticket prices until these are resolved and yeah they said they plan to be back on sale at 11 30 a.m the following day and reassure uh the fans uh, that they still have good availability across all ticket types. Please watch our social channels. Keep an eye on all our emails. And then once again, uh, they sincerely apologize. But this was not really um, the main frustration, put it that way, with Silverstone in regards to the tickets. I mean, obviously, people were complaining about the website crashing and not even knowing if their purchase has gone through for tickets. But the... The system, put it this way, that they were using to, um, to charge the fans in terms of the price was uh, quite bad. Let's get into that uh, now. So, it was notified to the actual people. And I'll show this uh, on screen, this quick um, little um, no, screenshot of the, um, the prices there. What they were doing is... Um, and they let people know in advance. So it's not like they just surprise people with this, which is, I guess is uh, is good. Um, what they did was every 90 seconds, they would update the prices of the, um, of the tickets, obviously, for certain areas. And mainly, obviously, the grandstand areas were the ones that were being sought after with the people queuing. This is a screenshot, I think took like 20 minutes apart. So the top one is what the price was originally for the National Pit Straight, which I believe, I think we're going to go onto a track map of the prices in a minute. I believe the National Pit Straight is 
it's either the new pit straight or it's the old one. I can't remember exactly, um, you know, the name of each grandstand and where it exactly is. But you can see on the top there, the price was £349. And then 20 minutes or 30 minutes later, it's now £510 or £509, but pretty much £510. That's an increase of, what, 160 quid in quite a short amount of time. And let me see if I can find another screenshot here. And yeah, I can here uh, from someone else. So um, this is from, what's it, Cops A, which I think is a grandstand. And you can see there the ticket, 300 49 quid oh, i remember this grandstand uh, or this uh, screenshot now so this is a screenshot of the the ticket prices for these grandstands before they increased um and i think the difference in the screenshots is like a 10 15 minute difference so for cops a 350 quid basically uh then for cops b 330 quid basically and for cops c uh what 310 quid but then if we go on to the updated one they again this was i think a 10 15 minute difference they were now cops a was up to 370 quid cops b was up to 370 quid and then cops c which was 310 uh was now 350 quid and the reason they were doing this because they were using a system called dynamic pricing. I'll quickly read out the dictionary of dynamic pricing uh, or the uh, yeah the absolute definition of it. It is where oh it is the practice of varying the price for a product or service to reflect changing market conditions. In particular, the charging of a higher price at a time of greater demand, which is essentially what the Miami Grand Prix organizers did when they were charging like $500 more for uh, certain tickets for certain grandstands or general admission than you would normally uh, charge for those areas. And the, that was the excuse that the organizer or the promoter of the Miami Grand Prix gave for the ticket prices is because of demand. So basically, because of the demand, they're just hiking the prices because of that. Which, I'm sorry, I don't agree with at all. Dynamic pricing is not a good system at all. It just isn't. And if we go on to this map, this is the map of all the ticket uh, prices for all of the different bits around the track that someone created. I don't know who exactly created this, but credit to whoever it was, because it is a great uh, little thing here. Um, so if we start from the, uh, the, they call it the Hamilton Strait here. Bear in mind we're in a cost of living crisis, especially if you're in the UK, you'll know exactly all about that. The Hamilton Strait, you're paying between what, 440 quid and 540 pounds. That's, yeah, a lot of money. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Um, and then you've got, um, what, you got 630 quid here, I think, for like turn one and that. Then you've got for the Wellington Strait, um, again, the prices are just absolutely extortionate. Uh, you've got the, uh, here, the General Admission Plus Luffield Terrace, £260. By the way, I'm not sure if this is just for race day. I assume it is just for race day these um tickets general admission plus luffield terrace for 260 quid is it's so much more than it should be it's ridiculous the difference in ticket prices compared how it used to be even three or four years ago is just ridiculous i mean i saw someone online on twitter saying that when they bought a general admission ticket for the 2018 british grand prix for the whole weekend i think it was only 100 quid but now it's at least 250 now i know you may say oh inflation i don't think inflation can explain purely uh the ticket you know prices for all of these seats being quite a bit higher than um than 
maybe it was last year. Obviously, I don't know what the prices were last year. And you can see for all these grandstands, uh, you're paying anywhere between 330 or pretty much 400 pounds. And then for the club area, chapel, Beckett's, yeah, you're paying between what? Uh, basically 400 pounds and 630 pounds. And then at Stowe, you're paying 330 pounds. Just way, way too much money to be paying, let's be honest, for um, to, you know, to attend an F1 race. When we've already talked about these issues, um, these issues, you know, um, before, and I did actually talk about this in my Miami Grand Prix video that I did about how um, the event I don't think was run in the best way possible. And, the, and I did get into the ticket prices of the Miami Grand Prix event and how we can't grow Formula One and include uh, people from poorer backgrounds, especially people from, you know, um, different racial minorities who have uh, poorer socioeconomic um, backgrounds or issues, whatever you want to call it. We can't include those people if the ticket prices are going sky high, not just because of inflation, but because of, um, you know, this dynamic pricing stuff. Yeah, that's the, the map there. And then David Croft did have this to say, which I do need to read out because I thought this was a bit of a funny tweet. He said, um, on the subject of, a of a dynamic pricing, understandably not popular with fans and himself, Every penny of profit made at the British Grand Prix is ploughed back into the circuit and this pricing structure isn't new. Just this year, tickets are selling and prices rising uh, faster. Now, they do put money back into the circuit, but they don't put as much money into the circuit as um, you'd think. The money they put in, or when I say that, I mean like the whole circuit rather than um, you know certain parts of the circuit. Because what they've done is... They do. They have upgraded in the last, say, ten years or so. Obviously, the um, the pit building that they built, you know, the new one for the new uh, pit straight. I think the paddock area and all of that stuff is um, been upgraded in the last few years or so. Obviously, um, th that part of the track is what all new compared to the rest of the track, which is pretty much uh, still from the older days of the Silverstone track. But I have actually been to silverstone i went to the six hours of silverstone world endurance championship race and in the spectator areas i mean the grandstands are absolutely fine in terms of quality but for a general admission if you've got a general admission ticket i honestly would expect a better um better facilities for the actual fans who have general admission tickets than you have uh, at the minute the, um, you know, a lot of the time people are walking on just gravel, um, you know, around the circuit. The, I guess the walkways, they're not the, they're not state of the art. I've heard complaints about the toilets at Silverstone, especially the disabled ones. So they may be putting, you know, every penny of profit back into the circuit, but it's only for, say, the richer or, uh, yeah, the VIP people who come to the Grand Prix around the pit building area rather than the actual area for um, area for the, what do you call it, for the actual fans itself, which I don't think has really improved that much in the last 10 years or so. But I do want to get on to um, a couple little uh, tweets here that I have um, bookmarked. So let me just quickly get those up on screen quickly. So this is one from Jordan F1. You may know him from Twitter. Um, infamous Lewis Hamilton fan, as you could call him. This is from uh, September the 14th, where um, he does this tweet. Silverstone have emailed back and claim prices have only raised by 5 to 7% in line with inflation. On the left of these pictures I'll get into is Club B last year. Right is the current price on the website. It appears their calculator is broken because that's an increase of 20%. That isn't just inflation. This tweet was done, but I think before the tickets went officially um, on sale for the, um, you know, that we saw for the queue on September 15th. So let's get into this now. So, um, what do you call it? 
he says yeah last year this is the the price for the two tickets at club corner uh you can see there obviously yeah, quantity two 730 pounds in price but now for this year 440 pounds so that yeah that is quite a, a big increase because if you were to buy obviously two of those um of those tickets now you're instead of spending what was it you spent 730 i think it was for the two uh club corner um grandstand tickets i think instead of uh 730 now it's what 150 quid more expensive if you were to buy two tickets like he did um last year so that is just again that is a a, a complete lie if anyone is trying to claim that especially silverstone that it is uh, been done in line with inflation because like he said it's an increase of 20 percent and that is just not right but also one thing i do want to quickly uh show on screen is this so they uh tweeted this out on september 16th the morning after uh saying that they plan to reopen the ticket sales at 11 30 a.m am today which was on yeah friday the 16th of september i just wanted to get into the um the replies to this tweet because you can just see the amount of people complaining about this um this guy this is a joke right when i got into the queue to buy tickets for the hamilton straight it was uh 499 pounds in the hour and 20 minutes i've been waiting you have raised the prices to over 600 pounds absolute fucking joke um let's find some others here uh this person says it's now 313 quid got up 100 quid from tuesday don't know why they can't just stick to a price yeah the general admission price has been going up as well and uh, technical errors you can see here um let's see if i can find some other ones here Uh, so yeah, this person uh, saying yeah. So yesterday, general admission 179 pound. Now 250 quid. It's probably even more now if you look on the website. And they were still in the queue um, at the time. Uh, let's find some other tweets here, if I can. There's, there's, I think there's a thousand replies to this, and there's only like 1,100 likes. Uh, you can again. You can just keep every reply. You can see people either can't, um, you know, the, the website's crashing and they can't just get through cleanly, or the uh, them complaining about the ticket price increases. And yes, yeah, so many people complaining here. Um, and you can see this person here saying, "F1 fans helped you out during the pandemic." As we all heard. Uh, is without fans, Silverstone couldn't survive. Now you repay us by increasing prices seventy pound in four hours. Do you know what? Let Silverstone go to the wall, and maybe the next British Grand Prix will uh, the venue will look after um, its fans. Yeah. Um, again, in a cost of living crisis, it is absolutely disgusting. Here's another one. Silverstone UK been waiting in the queue close to three hours, expecting it to be at least five hours. Now seeing tickets for general admission Sunday. That were £179 when I started at 11.30, now £219. So sad to tell my 11-year-old avid F1 fan that we can't support the home Grand Prix. When was this, what time was this tweet done? Yeah, look at that, 1.30pm. So, what, two-hour difference and it's already gone up, like, what, 40, 50 quid? Um, this person says they were 239 when I got them at 12.30. It, again, it is just so, so poor from them um let me just go back to um this yeah what silverstone is doing and again i'll probably link the miami grand prix um video where i got into the ticket price um fiasco kind of there with the ticket prices being way way too expensive there this is just so poor from Silverstone on so many levels again we're in a cost of living crisis money is hard to come by much harder to come by at the minute for obvious reasons this is just not on it is absolutely not on but the reason 
I think they are absolute scumbags for doing this is because they know people are desperate to come to Silverstone to watch the British Grand Prix next year or any British Grand Prix. So they're preying on that and they know they can get away with it. They know they can get away with this dynamic pricing shit because they'll get probably still uh, for the whole weekend two to four hundred thousand people turning up over the course of the weekend. So again, it is just such a poor, um, such a poor display from Silverstone uh, that they've put out here. And also, in regards to Formula One, again, we're supposed to be on this whole equality and diversity drive, but also including. Um, so people from poorer backgrounds, especially you know racial minorities that you know normally have poorer, um, say socioeconomic status, was supposed to be including them more. But now ticket prices for Grand Prix are going sky high, not just because of inflation, but because of this um, you know supply and demand. Which I understand if there is a demand um, that you know you have to charge uh, fans at a certain expense. You don't want to um, not be making a profit because you want to be able to, um, you know, operate as a business. I, I completely understand that. But at the end of the day, there has to be some sort of effort from Liberty Media or Formula One. If they actually care about including, you know, uh, racial minorities from poorer backgrounds, especially... If they actually care about those people being able to attend Grand Prix and getting involved in Formula One, then they have to consult the promoters and the people running these tracks and running the events itself because this is just a recipe for disaster. In my honest opinion, I don't think Formula One gives a fuck about poorer people or even racial minorities. I don't think they care at all. The reason... Um, they don't care is because they they with the prices going up as they are um pretty much the only people they care about attending their races is famous people to expose the sport to a bigger audience that's all they care about they don't actually care about the things they claim to so yeah it's such a disappointment that that is the way it is but Guys, let me know in the comment section what do you think of this whole fiasco with Silverstone and the tickets. And let Silverstone, if you are, you know, thinking of going to the British Grand Prix next year or if you're trying to get tickets, let me know in the uh, comment section, um, you know, what your experience has been trying to get tickets. But also make sure to let Silverstone on Twitter know your thoughts i'm not saying harass them or you know send nasty shit to them but do let them know that uh, you know the poor experience if you have had a poor experience that you've had because we cannot allow tracks to get away with this because this is absolutely shocking behavior we have seen from silverstone